Hey everybody, this is Dr. Kevin McGovern, and it's time for another game show podcast. If you're looking for the dating game, match game, The Price is Right, you're in the wrong spot. The game show is a podcast about physical therapy, strength, conditioning, fitness, sports, and all that good stuff. But today I have a very special guest, a much older colleague than mine, me, no, I'm kidding. Uh, a colleague that I've known for uh, uh, 27 uh, plus years, her name is Laura Turner. She's a physical therapist in the central part of Massachusetts. She specializes in a very cool niche of, of cheerleading injuries and strength, conditioning, and performance. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Ms. Laura. Laura, how are you? And thank you for joining us today. Hey, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. And hi, Game Show listeners. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, uh, letting me come on and talk about cheerleading and movement and all that stuff. Um, I'm, as Kevin said, I'm a physical therapist in Central Mass, and uh, I have uh, been working for a long time and been cheerleading for even longer. I cheerleaded all through high school and college and was on the first competition team at Northeastern uh, when we competed back in Dallas. And um, after college, decided I didn't have enough yet and decided to start coaching at uh, two local high schools in Massachusetts. And moved on from there to coach at the College of Holy Cross for six years, went back to coaching at Algonquin here in Northboro for two years, and then decided to hang up my palms and my cheer bows and go back to school. In that process, I was starting to learn a lot about motor control and um, movement and gait-based exercises that uh, incorporate working from foot to head and incorporating all bo whole body movement into recovery, which is something we didn't really do in school so much um, and it really sparked my interest so I went back to school uh, at Northeastern and got my doctorate and lo and behold I'm back in the cheer world focusing on cheerleading injuries and movement screening. Fast forward to today when I am uh, working on injury, pre injury prevention for cheerleaders, learning how to, uh, or helping them to learn how to move better, feel better, be able to progress skills so that they can cheer from young age through college and forever, however long, hopefully as long as I've been in the cheer world and they enjoy it too. So. Sweet. Well, I have a ton of questions for you, so I hope you're ready. I am ready. Did you study? Uh, yes, uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so you cover a very unique niche, as they say. So a niche for those people is like, you know, some certain little part, you know, so much that physical therapy can do. And like orthopedic surgery, it's become nicheified where, Different providers are, are in a special specialize in, in some aspect of physical therapy. I do a lot of work with baseball, which is a very underserved market. But she, I don't, I don't know. I know maybe because I'm in the market. A bunch of people who at least treat baseball athletes. I don't know anyone who is specializing in your niche. I, I mean, I have seen some cheerleading injuries. I've seen an elbow that looked like it got run over by a lawnmower. Like so, there's this very you know, we're talking jumping and landing. It's a lot of injuries. So what have, what's your experience been in the niche? Has people been open to it? Is it like a foreign substance to them? What's going on? Yeah, I think um, people are just starting to really talk about cheerleading injuries in, in the medical world. Like just like when mm -hmm. I did my research back in 2016 on injuries, everything was, it was minimal research that was published. Um, and since then, there's been a lot more. Because one, is it that there are more injuries? Two, are they people actually starting to take notice that hey, cheerleading is a big athletic activity, mm -hmm. and although we may not fall under sport guidelines and sport name, we are, you know, <clears throat> we are competing as a sport, and we are athletes for sure. Um, and so, I, um, I I think there's a lot of hype right now. And, I'm, and I use the word hype because I think people are very, you know, oh, cheerleading is so dangerous and nobody should be cheerleading. But I think that's a cyclical. Cheerleading can be very safe if athletes are prepared, ready, they progress correctly, and they're strong enough and have the mental capacity to be able to do what we're asking them to do, you know. And that, and sometimes, you know, just as in every sport, there's a learning curve and there's learning injuries. So if you're learning a new skill in anything, there's a risk of injury. And it, so injuries are going to happen. People are going to sprain ankles. People are going to, uh, you know, 
tear ACLs, but if we can keep our athletes strong and healthy and um, moving well, it can reduce those risks. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I don't think it's as widely knowledge acknowledged as baseball or football injuries, you know. Um, and of course, <laughs> sorry, my cat is going to jump in because I'm in a different area. So welcome. This is my, this is my life in my basement and my work at home. Um, I love it. Uh, people are, there, there are a lot more, um, I think they're taking stock of the concussions. And I think concussions, I'm, I'm not putting lightly on this. I think it's a very big problem, but concussions are, are very big buzzword right now in all of sports. And people are really hypervigilant on, or, or medical professionals are being hypervigilant because, because we need to be, because they're, they uh, are injuries that can kind of go unnoticed and we kind of brush another rug and oh it's just a mild concussion but that mild concussion can be hugely effective for people's life so and cheerleaders are are high risk of concussions uh, my, my last year coaching alone we had five concussions on a team of 12 that that one kid one, one kid couldn't return to play and um devastating because wow. this is something they had done for their life and some of that they had had recurring they had had a couple of concussions on their youth um, programs not known or kind of not fully recovered and then come back and just that mild re-injury and that mild mild you know head flaw <laughs> head banging around right you know creates a bigger problem and issue and so i think right now it's, there's a lot of talk about that um that people don't necessarily want to so, sometimes we just want to kind of brush it under the rug as a, either a coach or a parent or a cheerleader because we just want to be on the mat, um, but it's a big problem. So, so one of the things you touched on, I think, which is comparable to what I'm doing, you talked about expansion. Like it seems like everything youth cheerleading is a sport. I don't care what I want, want to classify. <laughs> youth sports is growing. Like when I started doing, uh, you know, baseball travel team coaching or, or strength and conditioning. No one was doing that back in 2006. Now everybody's doing it. So we have everybody. Things start to get watered down, right? Because I see a lot of injuries on my end that have to do with, I'm just going to come out and say it, poor coaching, whether that's on the strength and conditioning side, whether that's on the actual coach side. What do you see with that? Is technique, is coaching, is this watered down where, you know, everyone's got to be doing something, you know, growth? Because at the end of the day, my girls are in cheerleading. It's not free, right? So when the almighty dollar comes in, all of a sudden, you know, oh, yeah, we could add a four-year-old team. Or, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I think the product gets watered down. I think there's a lot of things in that. Um, obviously, this sport of cheerleading has exploded in the last 20 years. Uh, there, there used to be, you know, when, when I was growing up, there was Pop Warner, and that was, age six, eight, I don't even know when I didn't start until 14 high school, but my sister, I think started at age seven, maybe. And she went all the way through high school. Um, but there wasn't any all-star programs. Now there's all-star programs and they're doing amazing things. And there's some incredible teams and gyms out there that have also helped the high school level and also helped the college level, collegiate level. Um, and, there, you know, I think part of, the skill of cheerleading has progressed so much that we're pushing athletes to do more early. And some of those athletes are absolutely ready. And some may be sent into it because they're a smaller flyer and or a better tumbler, but not necessarily ready to go. It's not, I don't know that it's uh, coaching. Um, like, I think there's some amazing coaches. So the course of coaching and, and cheerleading, like in the Pop Warner world, it used to be moms and dads. Um, and so a lot of injuries in the past may have happened because they didn't know the, the actual, you know, this is how you build. This is where your body should be. I think that's sure. changed a lot now. And even if there are moms and dads that are still coaching, the the technique, the coaching um, certifications are, are more like you have to go through some like safety awareness stuff and don't, you know, don't. We used to always practice on blacktop and stunts in the backyard, you know. So don't do, right. don't do that. That's not always the safest place to do that. Um, but so I think that I think the coaching end is is going in the right direction and much better. Um, 
I do think that as a whole, strength and conditioning has changed. Like, I, you know, my kids at Holy Cross got into a strength and conditioning program with the other varsity sports um, and were able to get in the weight room. That was 2009, somewhere in that range. And I think that's continued to grow and change. Um, but the, what I see some of the problem is, and, and I think they include some of that in cheer gyms. Traditionally, my what I've seen at gymnastics gyms, you know, they do they do a lot of conditioning, but it's all gymnastics based, which is great because you need that for the skill. And the same thing mm-hmm. goes with cheerleading, but they're not necessarily um, learning the full resiliency or learning how to uh, move. You know, we we get into static stretching, we get more. You know, like work your splits and try to increase your flexibility by getting a better split um, or doing a lot of conditioning at the beginning or even, and I've done it too like we use push-ups as a conditioning after you know stunt comes down give me 100 push-ups um, and so the downside there is you're training them to be like it's a, it's a Pavlovian response like I don't want to drop the, the stunt because I don't want to do push-ups so number one they hate the push-ups which is a fabulous exercise for any, anybody. I know, <laughs> but right. but it's a you know it's a great stability exercise. And two, you're burning the kids out. You go and do not you know even if it's just ten push-ups, like if that stunt comes down, then they're getting more tired. You go to steal the stunt again. It's more tired. It's not building strength. It's just building fatigue. Um, and that has been kind of I, I don't know if that's shifted now um, in the you know in the cheer gyms and that, but I think I think conditioning. If you're in doing conditioning in a practice setting, it needs to happen at the end of practice. And realistically, well, so there needs to be a good dynamic warm up at the beginning of practice, and then at the end of practice to be your conditioning. And it needs to include some strength work, which is not just burpees and you know jump squats, but actual getting some weight weight training in. Um, we're all under time crunch. Kids are in practice for six days a week, three hours a day, then they have to go home and do homework when do they go into the gym and work out? Like I, I, it's hard to get that in when they're in season. Um, sure. And all-star programs are in season from May to the end of April. So, you know, when do you, uh, wow. you know, when do you have that off time to good. get that and really like ramp up to build some good strength and good foundations and then ramp it down to just keep the conditioning up and keep them on. Um, part of it's a culture. Like I, it's, I don't know the answer to that. Um, and trying right. to work and, and learn more so that I can help and make that better. But um, Learning more is always a great yeah. answer. So let me, you brought up a couple of things. Let me ask you this. You talked about training. I mean, my philosophy is you train for two reasons. One is first and foremost is to stay healthy and the second is to improve performance. And, you know, you mentioned going into the strength and conditioning gym. Are there exercises that cheerleaders should do? And are more importantly, are there exercises that cheerleaders need to turn and run away from? That's a great question. Um, or just yeah, it doesn't no, have to be no, specific no, exercise, right. but like like right. you know, are we Olympic lifting? Are we doing plyometrics? Like you, know, you mentioned burpees. Yeah. Like what? I, I don't. You know, and they, probably the third part of that, like you said, they go six, seven days. Do we need a day of rest or two yeah, in there? Right. Like, what would what, what would your suggestion be? I 100 percent think they need a day of rest. Um, you know, and that what, that off day, maybe that's a, a quiet, chill walk in the woods with your family without earbuds. You know, so you have the lack of, yeah. you don't have the stimulation, and it's, you're still moving, but you're not necessarily going hardcore. Um, I personally think cheerleading, like, like the majority of cheer practice is spent in a high intensity interval training zone um mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit in a second but like when, when we're when our teams or our routine has come together and we are getting ready to start to put it out so that we're running through it regularly even just segments of it you know we'll frequently do pyramid sessions so we'll run through pyramids over and over and over again like it's you you run it through if you don't hit perfect, you go and do it again for X amount of time in practice. That's all high intensity, and they're they're landing hard. You know, whether if they're landing on the ground or they're landing in a basket, it's a landing hard, and it's a hard landing for the bases who are catching. Also, 
um, if you're tumbling, it's the same thing. It's like impact, impact, impact. And so it's a lot mm-hmm. of high intensity. Um, hit, and they're mo- when they're starting to run full out and doing routines full out and getting like so college nationals is coming up next week. And so this past week into this next week, they're all running their routines as many times full out as they can so that they build their endurance and get, they can go out to the mat and be like easy peasy the three minutes that they're on the mat. Um, so I personally don't think that we need to be doing a lot of high intensity interval training, like repetitive sure. 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off, get your heart rate going. I think they, they, because they're on the go all the time, they actually probably need a little more steady state, mellow, not like, not even mellow, but steadier state cardio that's just keeping them steady for 20 minutes. Probably they need less running because they, you know, they don't need the impact, but then again, running so you can get the heart rate into that zone as opposed to walking for an 18 year old. You know, for me, taking a walk, a 40 minute mm-hmm. walk, my heart rate's going to get up into my cardiovascular zone. For an 18 year old, not so much. Um, not so much. So, you know, it, it's going to vary that way, but um, they, the exercises that I think are important, you know, I think they need to learn how to squat properly. And I like deadlifts because they're all Gee, up from the ground. audience, did you hear yeah. that? They need to learn how to squat yeah. properly. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know. I just saw your post today. And, and, um, <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. Like, you have to learn how to, what, what your mechanics are. Everything, like a base, everything a base does is a squat. Everything a tumbler does to get into a back answering, it's a squat. A flyer to get into load in position, it's a squat. So you, oh my goodness. you don't have the mechanics for that. But then the p- components of a squat, you know, you need to be able to single leg. And for females especially, we have a tendency to have weaker abductors and tend to be more valgus. Which our knees are going in. So you see a flyer loading into a basket and the knees go in. It's because they need to either correct their ankle mobility or build the hip strength to be able to correct that. So um, single leg exercises, I think, are much better at that, um, at building that. So uh, like squats, deadlifts, pushups, and overhead presses. Now, Olympic lifts, I think are fabulous for cheerleaders. Um, I, I don't Perfect. I don't coach them because I can't do them myself. I will coach like with kettlebells, <laughs> but with a barbell I can't do, but I do think, and, I, and personally, I love a kettlebell for condition, you know, for strength work for a cheerleader because it gives you an uneven, uh, training so if you hold it different positions sure. it's going to be just like holding a flyer um and correcting challenging that so that was my long-winded answer so <laughs> you have a very unique position as a you know you were a division one cheerleader for that great school on huntington avenue and you're a you know you're a doctor of physical therapy so you kind of from come at it from two different perspectives if if a you know a 14 year old gal was listening to this and she wanted to get better. We're besides obviously getting in touch with you. That's the obvious. But what 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 would she want to focus on? Like, what are some twenty thousand foot things that a cheerleader would need to really start to get to the next level to maybe cheer in college? Yeah, um, one recognize the commitment it's going to take, and you know, are you willing to? You got to do your homework. You got to get your grades. There's no currently uh, full scholarships that I know of for cheerleading. There may be some academic, there may be some different things, but again, you have to do your, your schoolwork. Mm-hmm. So make sure, you know, it, 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 whatever, whether you're at cheering high school or you're cheering all-star, it takes a lot of time and you have to be dedicated and committed. Um, getting as strong as you can to be able to do, you know, what you're going to be able to do, do your conditioning, make good habits. Uh, work on your balance, uh, which is in my cheer program, I'm just calling equilibrium. Make sure your energy is good. Make sure you're eating right. Like, learn how to fuel your body. Like, you can't go all day, show up at practice, and you know have a, a bag of Cheetos out of the vending machine and expect that you're going to go nail your routine and, and be solid in learning stuff. So, and then creating good habits around sleep and drinking water and getting your mobility work in so you can. Put yourself through this stress of, of what you're doing. Um, I didn't make my cheer team when I was uh, a senior in high school. Uh, we had a new coach come in, and you know, so I cheered back in the '80s in high school, and it was uh, it wore saddle shoes. So we didn't, right. you know, we, we were I jumping a, a little, um, but you know, we weren't really doing much stunting. We climbed on shoulders and did like lower level pyramids and stuff. 
but then this new coach came in and she had been a professional coach, I think for the Albany Patroons. Um, and she kind of changed the whole style and it one hit me upside the head. Like, whoa, I, you know, I actually have to put some work into it and put the effort in. Yeah. I mean, I always was the type to show up, but I just kind of, I was like, Oh, I can just breathe through this. So I had to put, right. put work in, um, and really practice, um, getting to know my, the dance and the, you know, at that time was more learn the dance and get better at my jumps. It wasn't until college when, again, I didn't make the team one year and I came back and I was like, I'm making this. And I just went and practiced my stunts after my stunts. And then, like, third or fourth year in, in cheering, we started to get in the weight room and learn how to lift. So starting to build some stronger legs and build my core, not just, you know, playing around at practice and actually putting some effort in that I was able to progress. And what I wish I had done, done that sooner so that I was a stronger flyer. Um, you know, I in college cheered co-ed so whether you're base or your flyer like you need to be strong to be able to do your what you want to do and flexible but you need to sure. you know, do those reps so um get into the weight room learn how to do it correctly and i think that's a key thing like you can go in you can pick up heavy weights and you can think you're strong but if you're not mechanically doing it right you can get through for a while but that's gonna catch up with you at 14 you don't think about how an injury is like, oh, it hurts my back a little. Or I can just, it's fine. I'm not going to do it. But when you're, it does catch up with you, the bigger issue at 14 is well, if you don't learn how to do it correctly and you're not training your body to move in the right way, you're going to just repeat that pattern so that when you go into, when you're, do, when you're doing your squat, if you're not getting good mechanics on that, you're not staying solid, just like we tell you to do when you're, when you're stunting, it's going to come over and carry over into stunting, tumbling, whatever. Um, so okay. Learning, learning the right way to so, learning the right way to do that, and and not being afraid to lift, um, and fueling your body. Those are the three biggest things I think are important. Okay. So my um, girls were involved in cheerleading for a while, and there's two types, I guess we'll call it. So they had the game, the football game, and then I had to pay twenty five dollars to watch my own daughter perform at the Reggie Lewis Center with all these other gals in a performance like that was more gymnastic-based and dance-based. So is there a, a difference? Are, are all programs to that, too? Because, you know, I'm seeing it, you know, then you watch ESPN, you see these, you see these like, dance-based competitions. So are we getting away from sport team? Because I always tell my, you know, my girls, look at, don't cheer for football. You can go and play if you want, right? Because I think and my girls always love the dance and performance more than the, you know, cheering for Bill running down the field. You know what I'm saying? So can you speak to that about that kind of cheerleading? Yes. Um, so my, I, I don't have experience on an all-star program. I've never cheered all-star. Um, I've worked with, you know, as a physical therapist, I've worked with all-star athletes. Um, and I, some of my high school athletes went and cheered some all-star programs when it was okay to do both. Um, they just, yeah. Um, this is, I'm, I'm, I am old school because I love being in front of a crowd. I love, you know, I like being at a game. Like I, our, our, our mentor asked about, you know, would you want, would my wife want to go to the uh, final four? And I was like, I, I do. I love being right. in that setting. Like I, and to me, there's nothing more exciting than just being in front of a crowd and like seeing everybody and being able to toss stunts and cheer. And I don't think like even now, like you look at college cheerleaders on the sidelines of a football game or a basketball game. And so there's different regulations for either one, but if we call basic stunts and whatever, you know, they're still doing all the athletic activity on the sideline. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, to me, it's all the same things. And we used to look at, uh, games as practice time for our competitions. You know, you you take pieces of gotcha. it. You're not going to go out into a. You don't want to go to a football game and do your full competition routine because it's it's in a it's a show. Um, right. You know. Um, but you can take pieces of that and put that into uh, a high school event, and so learning those skills for that competition, and it's and it's basically the same for high school competitions versus all star and and college people will argue that it's not but you all you have two minutes and 30 seconds on the mat 
it's a routine. There are components of tumbling and stunting, pyramids, jumps, dance, um, spirit enthusiasm, you know, mm-hmm. facial expressions, and how clean a routine looks like if there's falls and if there's if people are actually sticking their stunts or if they're wobbling all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and then overall, like the music and the you know how that all happens. So sure. Um, how are they different? Like you can incorporate both. I think if you somebody coming from straight up all star, never doing high school or pop one or any you know game day, transitioning to college, th- there are some college teams that have strictly competitive teams, and then they have a game day team as well. Game day squad as well. Usually, they they may or may not be alternates for the competition team. I you know I, at Northeastern we had one. It was just us. So, so um, I don't really, and at Hall Cross, I had one. Yeah, I think Northeastern now actually has like the cheerleading squad, and then there's like the dance team, which seems to be more acrobatic. So even even within that, it's, you know, the last game I went to, it's getting specialized. They, I know that, um, and I and uh, I know who Northeastern does it, and I think BC had done it too. It's probably becoming very popular. But yes, having a dance squad and a um, and a cheer team. And a cheer squad. Yeah, and so when you travel like to NCAA games, you can only take twelve people, and so they'll split half dancers and half oh, I gotcha. um and the dancers i don't know where they're at right now i haven't followed um you know what what they're like if they're doing any gymnastics but they're sure you know they're the um palm dance is is it's a form of dance that, that like that game day wise it's, it's a lot more choreographed and spirited like and lots of different level stuff and whatever um, than it used to be in the past, but and, and it's and that's actually a lot more specific than a cheer dance. A cheer dance, like we usually have maybe thirty seconds. I'm not like not a specific time frame, but there's like a segment, and it might be interspersed between the stunting and pyramid. And like so, you have twenty people on the mat and twelve people are in the pyramid. Six of those are going to tumble, and two of them might dance. You know, depending cool. on where they're. You know, in a lot a lot of cheer routines right now is just high energy and like. A lot of transitions and a lot of visuals that are kind of all over the place. Nice. Did that answer that question? So, be, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so getting away from cheerleading a little bit and just like how kind of your philosophy. I, I know that you have some. You've got a, a philosophy, a treatment philosophy that you're uh, pretty fond of, right? Do you want to talk about that? Like, uh, like it's a it's, it's a it's a growing thing of provider. So. Can you speak to what that is and why you like it and how it's working for you? So I started studying uh, neurokinetic therapy, um, which is an assessment and treatment technique, uh, which we look at motor control and how the body responds to different movement patterns um, and um, looking to see what muscles overworking versus underworking. And because a, a muscle can be tight, like you could have tight hamstrings and you stretch it and stretch it and stretch it and it never lets go. It's because it doesn't actually need to get stretched. It needs to get stronger. And that may be because the hip flexors are tight or the core is tight or, you know, whatever muscle. Is gotcha. Not, you know, a, a, a different muscle group is tight. So you'll stretch the one that's tight and, and strengthen the one um, that's, that needs to get stronger. And we call it inhibited. But, um, and then. How long, have you been, how long have you been working with that kind of technique? 10, 10 years now. Oh, 2013. Wow. Yeah, 10 years now. And what um, kind of what kind of results have you seen? Uh, it's been amazing. Like it, it's yeah. Ninety percent of people get better pretty quickly, like really quickly. Nice. Um, and then I, and I, you know, in physical therapy, I use it for back pain, for knee pain, mm-hmm. shoulder pain, um, and it, and neck, you know, everything, and a lot. That has also transitioned me into like if something's going on on both sides, I'm going to look to the core. Um, you know, how's the core stable? And a lot of times it comes back to core for, for all of us um, and breathing and, you know, what are we doing and how long, yes, it does. you know, because I think we can shut down a lot of stuff by doing that. Um, you have to be a, I always say you have to be a white belt before you can be a black belt, right? right. And that's in anything, yeah. right? Right. And then I also. All right, uh, Laura, well, so. So I can't, can't not talk about anatomy and motion, which is the gateway stuff. Um, and that we don't have to dive into that, but that's how I really started to connect 
the foot and the ankle and kind of the ankle moves with like the pelvis and the pelvis and the ribs and you try to connect it all to the dots and uh, those are great exercises that you can do anywhere like at the grocery store the gro- at the gas pump and pre-practice if you want to you know do some corrective work and incorporate some 3d work in so yeah, yeah i start most of my evals with the foot it's amazing yeah like you start there and i kind of work up yeah all right well or how would someone let's talk about how they get in touch with you so i'm sure we have a website we've yeah. got instagram facebook you've got i know you've got a facebook group yeah so why don't you tell sure. the audience how to get in touch with you and how they can work with you thanks I, yeah, they have all the above. Uh, on <laughs> all the above. All the above. Check. Uh, look for Move Better PT and Fitness um, is the Instagram handle. Um, you can also find me, Laura Kid Turner, on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you can friend me, Laura Turner, or Move Better. Uh, Move Better LLC. Move Better PT and Fitness. Look for the turtles. Um, I, it's my symbol. the turtles. Yeah. Um, and then my Facebook group is Healthy Cheerleading. Um, Come and join, and I, I want to talk movement and you know help help go through different movements for cheerleaders. My website's movebetterllc.com, um, and you can reach me at laura at movebetterllc.com. Nice. Hopefully, one day we'll be able to say just check this box, and right. we'll get every yeah. everything. So all all the social Instagram media. is all under my link is a LinkedIn or a Linktree yeah. account. LinkedIn. Yeah, the Linktree yeah. that's been that's been pretty yeah. good of getting people, but. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. And uh, this is this is cool. I didn't, you know, it's a, it's certainly a very underserved market, and certainly a lot of people don't know about it. The fact that it's not called a sport kind of bothers me. We can, uh, I mean, I can, but, we can we can go back. I I don't necessarily disagree with it, and I don't, I think at this point in time, it's more of a semantic word. Um, probably a Title IX word. There is some. There are some mm. colleges that are expanding and, and make taking away. They're making like a stunt and acro programs yep. and making that more of a sport. That's great. Gotcha. But is it well? Sure? Either way, you've yeah. got to be <laughs> right. Um, anytime you're using your own body weight, you know, dance, cheer, gymnastics. I mean, I I see those athletes as the strongest I've ever seen the people because they're, I mean, there's, there's no better exercise than lifting your own body weight, yeah. you know, and being able to then lift your body weight. And then on top of someone else, it's just someone else's body weight. It's, it's, it's amazing. So I thank you again. Um, and what's your website one more time. So people don't forget. www.movebetterllc.com. Sweet. So thank you so much for coming on and, uh, Thanks for having me. Laura Turner, everybody. So thank you, Laura. Thank you. Have a good day. That's it, everybody. See you in the next show.